Good afternoon and welcome to Alfred Music's webinar series, Learn, Teach, Play Online. My name is Michaela Graham, Senior Event Specialist for Alfred Music, and I will be running everything in the background for our session today. We are thrilled to host today's webinar introducing flexible instrumentation for string orchestra. If you have any questions or comments for our presenters throughout the session, please feel free to drop it in the chat box. We love hearing your thoughts throughout the presentation and we will have a time for Q&A at the end, but our presenters will be answering questions throughout as well. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenters today. We have Chris Bernatas, the Director of Instrumental School Methods and Repertoire for Alfred Music, and Jim Palmer, one of our wonderful Alfred Music authors and clinicians. Chris, I will let you take it away. All right, I always love it when Jim pops up and covers my face. No, put it back <laughs> over there. That was always better. Uh, thank you so much for joining Jim and I today. It's been uh, a lot of fun doing these webinars and getting to talk to virtually people all over the place. And uh, I'm just glad to be here once again with Jim. Uh, we always have a good time and this is just another extension of that. And I'm especially excited today to talk to you about Alfred and Hyl or Bellowin and Hyland Etling String Orchestra Flexible Instrumentation. Very interesting. What we did, we just did a presentation on the string band flex on the Bellwin Flex, on the Bellwin Flex and Alfred Flex, which is an instrumentation mix of band and string instruments with percussion, which is very different than what we're talking about now. Uh, if you missed that presentation, by the way, it is going to be available for replay at alfred.com slash webinars. Uh, and this one will also be available for replay too. All of them, if you go into that webinar, alfred.com slash webinars, you can see all the previous webinars that have taken place. Uh, so if you're interested in checking those out, I think it would be a great idea. So now, however, we're really excited to present to you Bellwin Flex and Highland Etling Flex for String Orchestra. This came about, as Jim and I were talking through uh, over several months, about how could, what could we do for the string orchestra community to help teachers and students adapt to not only the current teaching climate, but every teaching climate. How about we come up with something new to try to help serve teachers, give them the tools that they need to help their students connect to music in the way that they see fit. And this is that, this is a little bit of an experiment. How this works out is gonna be dependent on how it's received by you guys. So our first shot at doing this is gonna be including only a few titles and we'll see how that goes. We're gonna see how it plays out and then we'll see how we can adapt this in the future. I do wanna mention as we go, please feel free to add your questions in the chat if we aren't able to get to it while we're talking, we will come back later on and answer as many questions as we possibly can. So the difference with this Flex, it's not a series. The difference with this Flex product is that we took some of our 2020 catalog titles, which I'm incredibly proud of, by the way, as my first year's uh, string editor for Alfred. Uh, it was very exciting to see that come to life and I'm very excited to present that catalog. We picked a few titles from that catalog and we've actually created supplemental parts. It's not a new series. There is not a new purchase associated with this. When you purchase the original piece from the 2020 catalog, you will be able to go and download supplemental parts for all instruments in the string orchestra. So you can go to, and those will be available from www.alfred.com slash supplemental. That'll bring you to the website. You put in the product code, and then you'll be able to download PDFs from there of these extra parts that were created for these products. They're not available just yet, though. More on that later on. Uh, let me bring back Jim. Let me bring back Jim. Hey, there hey. he is. <laughs> There's Jim. Uh, when we talk about these things, one of the things I like about the webinars is it's a little bit more casual than a regular kind of clinic or presentation. And we get to talk about things and maybe have share some of the behind the scenes. Uh, I hope that teachers that are watching this, you guys realize how powerful your voice is and how much it means to us at Alfred to hear your input and to find out what you really want and what you really need, uh, because that's what we want to create. That's what we want to present. And if that, it's exciting and it's challenging. So when we hear about teacher challenges, that makes our wheels kind of spin and we want to figure out how to do this. And, and I have to give a lot of credit to this to Jim in hearing the many voices that he's heard, both those in his head and those from the teaching community. Jim, it's why, brutal, it's now, brutal. I can imagine. <laughs> um, Jim, why don't you give everybody a little bit of a tour of how did we make these supplemental parts and, and 
What do they look like? Well, first of all, if you can see my background at all, I'm talking to you from school today, and we just finished our first week totally virtual. I call it Cyberspace Orchestra. And I got to tell you, smart music is saving my life. We're on it every single day. And um, when Chris and I started talking about these series and, and the opportunities of making these arrangements, it, it really came to our attention that we may not be making music together for a while. We might not um, have a regular ensemble. And so it would be really great to have some flexible uh, parts. So I want to tell you the process that we went through. It was, it was for me, it was really, really fun. Um, the first thing that we did is we picked six pieces that we thought would be really good for this type of series. And then we had our engraver who is totally amazing. He uh, exported the parts into four sets. There's a violin set, a viola set, a cello set, and a bass set. And what I did from that uh, particular part is that I took a look at the score and I really made sure I was familiar with the original score and the original parts. And then I um, took each family sets. I started with the violin sets. And the process that I spent there is that I would um, compare the flex parts as we call them with, um, I would, I would make the flex parts, as we call them, I would compare them with the original parts so that uh, we would, we would uh, make sure that, they're, that I'm keeping all the original melodic and harmonic material was available. Um, and so I went through each one of those and I, and I made sure that they stayed onto the original part. The really good thing about it is we didn't, um, we didn't have to rearrange any of our, um, any of our, additions. They are, they are as close to the original edition as possible. So I didn't have to move the melody around or anything like that. So then after I took a look at those and compared them to the original parts, I checked ranges to make sure that we didn't go below the C string or up into finger nose picking area for our violins and made sure that the ranges were really good. And occasionally I would have to bring some things up an octave because when we put them together with the lower instruments, it just didn't quite work. So some of the transpositions I did, I moved up the octave so to make it smooth and make it more of a musical idea. Um, and then the fun part and most detailed part is I had to remove all of the fingerings. So if we had a first violin part that went up into third position, when I'm editing the viola part, the cello part, or the bass part, there those violin fingerings were. And I can imagine my cello player going, what was he thinking? That is the most ridiculous fingering I have ever seen in my entire life. So we made sure that all those fingerings were correct. We added new fingerings so that we're going to avoid any of that slam crash stop in rehearsal. Uh, so that Mr. So-and-so, what fingering is there? They're all going to be in the parts. They're all edited really clearly. Then we sent all of that after we went through every single one of those parts. It goes back to the engraver. He made all the changes in the sets. And then it came back to Chris and I, and we looked through them again to make the final touches so that when you get them, they're going to be perfect. So I'm. It was for me, it was such a fun process. And I tell you, it's so great having finale because I could hear the parts through finale and it was really exciting for me to hear the different combinations that we came up with. Yeah. And actually Jim talking about that part, I'm actually going to screen share. I wasn't going to screen share, but now I think I am going to, because this is a learning process, kind of like everything else and figuring out even on the other series, the, the Alfred and Bellman series band and string mix, uh, that was really a challenge to kind of come up with. And when we're talking about string orchestra, and making these parts work together, the voicings were a conversation. How do you make that work? And it's gonna be figuring out a little bit of balancing, but the number one confusing thing, I think, and Jimmy can say if you agree, was naming the parts. <laughs> we, we really struggled with that because right? we wanted, yeah, I can remember we went back and forth on that. We wanted to make it really, really clear so that when you open the part or when you downloaded it, you knew exactly what you were going to, what you were going to find. Right. And going back and forth, my brain had to go through many different worlds between the, the band string flex and the string orchestra flex. Well, here's the confusion for those of you that may not care. In the band string flex, you're talking about five parts or four parts. Part one, part two, part two, part four. When you come over to our string orchestra flex, you're not talking parts. We, the word part means your violin part, your cello part, your viola part. And that's where we kind of came up with it. So I, I do want to just quickly explain how they work. 
you buy Jim's Symphonia in D major, his arrangement of Symphonia in D major. You have your standard string orchestra set, violin one, violin two. So those are not in the supplemental download page. But what is, is what you see on my screen right here. Violin flex part three, which is the viola part. Violin flex part four, which is the cello part. And then violin flex part five, which is the string bass part. And those sets are for the instrument. Set one would be for violin groupings, set two for viola, set three for cello, set four for string bass. And you can print all of those out. Again, it's added value to the pieces that we have uh, and not a, a separate product on top of that. Chris, can I interject here too? Absolutely. What, what I really, really love about these, these I, I'm so excited about this because my experience as being a high school orchestra director in the past when I would do a flex part and I needed to have some flexibility in it, it would be super awkward. Like that might work really well for a violin, but it didn't work for a viola, or that might work well for a cello, but it was really awkward for the violin. We made really, really sure, and we were very careful that when we made those changes into the opposite instruments, that it made sense and didn't become something really awkward and strange to play. That's right. Uh, I think that it's pretty clear how you can get these. And Jim, I think you talked about, well, how would you use these in class? Can you give us a couple different scenarios? Absolutely. Um, one of the one of the ways that I would use them in class is the the very first and easy way to think about is if I had a student like a viola student that was really good and I had a weak violin section, I could easily give my viola player the first violin part. It would be a viola set. Viola would be the set uh, set three violin one, violin one part. And now the viola has a first violin part. But even better than that, like in remote when we can't really be there with the kids or when you can only have a few kids there, wouldn't it be awesome to have a cello choir? That would be a great way to do it. And so the, the cello choir could download the violin one, the violin two, the viola part, and then they would have the cello part and the bass part. And lo and behold, you've got a cello choir and you can do that for all of the instruments as well. I just thought about it for remote. If you have these in their supplemental downloads, you can have kids print them out at home and practice all the parts within the string orchestra, right? Yeah. So Chris, that is such a great idea. I love that. And then that way the kids can get to learn the, once they're back into the uh, heterogeneous situation with everybody, they'll already have the other parts in their ears and in their fingers. I totally love that. That's right. Awesome. So we put together a couple of demos for you. So you're gonna be able to hear a little bit of putting on the pits. And the first demo you're gonna hear of it is if it were five violins. So let's give a quick listen to a little bit of putting on the pits and five violins. I feel like that would be so much fun to play as a student. And I know I know when I wrote that, I played all the parts and I had a lot of fun playing it. How about if you put some sunglasses on your cello section and put them out in front for everybody to applaud for? Let's give a listen to what it would sound, the second half of it as a cello section. That's just one way to give it a try. Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about Symphonia and let's give a listen to some of those scenarios. 
All right. The, um, the Symphonia in D is one of, I just love this piece. It's originally written for a, symph a small classical symphony orchestra with winds, brass, and percussion. And then I arranged the original one for string orchestra only. And we thought it would be a lot of fun um, for the kids to have the opportunity to hear the and play the other parts. And so when we were talking about putting the webinar together, I felt like it was really important to show the success of, of these editions by having an example of the very, very best instruments in the orchestra play it. So now you're going to get to hear the viola version of Symphonia in D. So there you have it. The violas wail in a way. We all have them. And it's really funny. Whenever I go down and help with the middle school on recruiting day and I'm demonstrating on my big 16 and a half inch viola, all of a sudden they have 20 violas signing up for orchestra. And so now you have an opportunity to feature those great viola players in that group. But you know what? One of the other things that just is really hard as a teacher is there are those bass players. Sometimes those bass players get really bored. They get in trouble back there. So I thought it would be, uh, there's Chris. He would be, he would be in the bass section back there. I would have spitballs all over the back of my head. I know how that goes. So we wanted to um, show you how it would, how it would sound with the basses. And I got to be honest with you. When I heard this, after we put it into this audition for the basses, I totally fell in love with this. So I hope you enjoyed the bass version of Symphony and D. So that's our awesome bass version of that. I just love, Chris, did you enjoy that sound? It's really awesome. It was fun. I was smiling. <laughs> I mean, I smile usually, but that made me smile a little bit bigger. Absolutely. And what we want to do, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but we want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions. You've got the chat right there. So if you have any questions about how these work or how you would uh, um, how you would get them or what are some of the combinations, what I've really been thinking about is that there are so many different ways you can use it. And first, remotely assigning the kids so that they can learn all of the parts because the PDF is available. Like Chris said, you can upload it and post it in their email and, and they've got it. And another thing that that really works because we, Alfred owns the copyright to these pieces. We're publishing these, uh, these additional parts. You can use them for solo and ensemble. So if you were thinking about a cello, a cello ensemble for solo and ensemble, these parts would be available for that. Or if you wanted a string quintet, and let's say you needed, you didn't have a viola player and you had three violins, there's a lot of different options that you can use these parts for. And I also love the fact that once you buy the music, these parts are free and you've got all the flexibility in the world, thus the flex parts. And I think that the, I like that term because I think that the, the Yankees need to learn to be a little bit more flexible so that they can win a few more games these days. So wow. I'll, I'll just toss that softball over to you, Chris. Wow. That was not nice, but that's how Palmer is sometimes. So anyway, 
<laughs> I do want to share with you the list so you can see which other titles are coming out in this downloadable format. So if you look in the uh, chat window, you're going to see a, down, a PDF that has the titles that are coming out. What we did was we picked a few different titles from across the grade levels and across the catalogs to give a nice mixture for this first release so that you can see we have a, a Richard Meyer piece, we have Susan Day, Bob Phillips, Doug Wagner, me and Jim uh, as our first set of these. And we're gonna be really interested to see and hear how you use them. Now, these are so new, however, when you buy the original copy, it's not going to have any label on the cover. It's not going to say where the downloadable parts are. So the best way to get that information about this release as soon as these are available is to sign up for the email list, which you'll be able to do a little bit later on. Sign up for the email list because as soon as these get uploaded to www.alfred.com slash supplemental, you'll get an email. It'll be released on social media. Go and get your parts uh, because this has came up new. And this is a brand new idea. So you can please sign up to get that. And you know, uh, the reason that this is so new is that Chris and I have really been listening to the concerns of our of our teachers. And we wanna encourage you uh, and spread to your friends too. If there's an idea you have or some problem that you're having with your music, send it to us, email either Chris or me. And, and we talk about a lot of things and we hardly ever say, ah, I don't have time for that. If it's a really great idea or really need, we'll make time for that so that we can meet the needs of our teachers. Yeah, that is a really important thing. We are available and in touch. We are here to support music education, music educators. As long time, I was a teacher of 28 years, and I just recently stopped teaching. But actually, even in my post-teaching career, I spend a lot of time teaching and collaborating, and I spend more time learning now than I ever did. Because uh, as a teacher, you never stop learning. I think we actually answered most of the questions as we went. But if you do have anything that you think of after we sign off, please feel free to email me at cbernatos at alfred.com. And Jim? You can e yeah, you can email me at james.palmer1966 at gmail.com. Awesome. Uh, I do want to also, also remind you that replay videos and all links are going to be emailed out next week. You can get a, a download a certificate of attendance for today in case you're able to get some professional development time for this. So you can download that. That's going to be in the chat in just a second. And also, as we mentioned several times, your feedback is important and it has an impact on us. So if you could take a couple of minutes and just fill out the survey to let us know, was this helpful? Do you think this is a good idea? Is there something we're missing? Or are you really excited about what we just talked about? We're, your input is important. So take a second and fill that survey out. We really do appreciate it. And again, if there's anything that we can do to help support you this year and any year and throughout the year, please let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. Jim, thanks for joining me again. Chris, loved it. Always, anytime I have an opportunity to hang out with you for a few minutes, it's well worth it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you.